What's going on folks? Welcome back to the channel. As you can see, we're in the gun room again. And I wanna talk about the impact that gun YouTubers have on the industry. Basically, how influential, how influential are they? Because I got a comment, I did a, 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 a review on my Smith & Wesson CSX, and I think I titled it something like, I'll put it down below. I think I titled it something like, the, the gun that gun YouTube killed or they got a bad rap, whatever it was. I think that my, it's my personal opinion that it got a lot of bad press from gun YouTube and that curbed sales. Not only that, there are probably several other factors that did it, but it helped curb sales and officially, you know, uh, just effectively it killed the gun. Um, and somebody came back with a comment and said, I think you're overstating, uh, you know, I, I think you're overstating how much influence, or I think you think gun influencers have more influence than they actually do, was basically what they said. And I'm like, okay, I disagree. I think they have a lot of influence nowadays. And I wanted to hear from you guys, what do you think? I personally believe that he is mistaken and, and I'm, gonna make this video to disagree with him, but I'm gonna do it respectfully because that's how I grew up. I know a lot of people don't do that nowadays. That's how I do, respectfully, as a man. Let me disagree with you, sir, because where else, tell me where else, people go nowadays to find out about new guns and gun releases and new products in the gun tube world, in, in, in the gun industry. Where do they go? Why do you think so many of these companies pay these huge influencers like Grand Thumb and Military Arms Channel and, and Sooch and all the big ones? Why do you think they give them free guns? Why do you think they pay them the money? And I know shills and all this other kind of stuff, but why do you think they pay them the big bucks to do this type of stuff? Because they reach millions of people. What other platform? And I'm not just, I just don't mean YouTube. I mean social media in general, but mainly YouTube because they're the biggest one. If you're watching this, sir, and I don't remember who left the comment. Um, if, I, if, I, if I can find it, I'll put it in here and everything. But again, with all respect, I disagree with you. Tell me where else people get their information on new releases on guns, on the quality on guns, on the, on, how, on the performance on guns, because print media is dead. Nobody's buying guns and ammo anymore. Only the last few old dudes are buying guns and ammo and shooting times and ha American handgunner and handguns and all. I, I used to love those back in the day. Back in the day, before the 2000s, all right, back in the 90s, as far back as I can remember since I've been into guns, I would buy Guns and Ammo Magazine, American Handgunner, Shooting Times. That's where you would learn. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm getting it. <coughs> Coke Zero. I'm getting over a sinus thing and my throat gets dry. Ah, so print media was where it was at. You used to get it from print media and standing around the gun counter at your local gun store. You would go down to the gun store and be like, huh, I wonder what new release they got in. And they would be like, there'd always be some old guy that hung out there all the time and would talk to everybody. And he would say, hey man, you seen the new Smith this, Smith that, whatever, new release from this, new release. That's where I heard about when Kimber first came out. I lived in Washington State. I used to go to the store called Bullseye Shooter Supply. Funny thing. That's where the DC sniper got his gun from. So I had a visit from the ATF all those years ago. That's a story maybe I'll tell one time. But Bullseye Shooter Supply in Tacoma, Washington. I went there, bought, uh, you know, I bought several guns from there, maybe half a dozen at the time when I, when I used to live there in the early to mid 90s. <clears throat> and that's where they're like, hey, check out this new 1911. It's from this company called Kimber. It's $500 and it comes with all the... You guys, you gotta understand, Colt was like the big dog back then. It was only Colt. There's a few other make, companies making 1911s, auto ordnance, stuff like that, but not, Colt was big dog. Then Kimber comes along and you get 
and it wasn't this one, it was the classic two or whatever, but I just had this one sitting around. You got, this is basically what they looked like back in, you're talking early to mid nineties. You got the upgraded sights, you got the beaver tail, you got the, the extended thumb safety, you got this, all, 1911s, you got the Delta Hammer. They did not come set up like this back then. They really didn't. Kimber, you, you would get a 1911, then you would send it to a gunsmith to do, have this stuff done. No cap, as the kids say. No lie. You would get a standard Colt and you would send it off to a gunsmith and they would do all this work to it. But Kimber was one of the first companies to say, oh, right from the factory. A factory made, boop, and they were made in Clackamas, Oregon at the time. Here it is, 500 bucks back in the day. 500 bucks. So it was a revolution. People loved it. That's the first place I heard about that. I went into the gun store. They're like, hey, check this out, man. Because there was no YouTube, no social media, no TV shows with it on there that were, you know, no newspapers. So you had to buy magazines, print media, and you heard it by word of mouth from your buddies at the range or at the gun store. That was pretty much it. You would hear it at, at gun shows, stuff like that. You would, you would hear, you would talk to people. But now, People go on YouTube. Tell me you don't go, if you're watching this video, all right, because I do it. I know I do. I go on YouTube. I'm subscribed to gun channels, and I go on YouTube, and I watch gun content, and I say, oh, that's cool, even if it's just to find out about the new releases, okay? So if you're watching this, the guy that said that I think I, I overestimate the influence of, of gun tubers and YouTube and gun tube media. Where else, you tell me, sir, where else? What's bigger than YouTube when it comes to guns? And how many times if you had 50 YouTube channels, big to small, praise the hell out of a gun, it would shoot through the freaking roof, the sales would. But if top to bottom, they shit on a gun, it would suppress the sales. I would love to talk to some of these big industry marketers because why do you think they're reaching out? They even reach out to the small channels. I've even had some, some sponsored videos they want, they'll send it out to. Some of these smaller companies can't afford to send it to Grand Thumb and some of these other companies. So they send them to smaller channels like me and Trigger Bar Philosopher and Turkey's Opinion. Some of the smaller channels that are like us, some of the channels that I dig. They'll send out and they'll say, hey, can you review this for us? And, and a lot of times the, the smaller channels are more honest because they're not beholden to, you know, big groups and, and big companies and all that other kind of stuff. Sometimes there's some of that, but a lot of times they're showing you the new product and it's up to you to decide whether or not you want to buy it. Now, back in the day, you didn't get, at least nowadays, you get a test video on whether it fails or not. Back in the day, you didn't. You didn't get a test video. You didn't get any type of performance. You just looked at the gun and you thought, oh, that's kind of a cool gun. I see it in a magazine. The magazine says it's cool. Let me go buy it. And you buy it and it's shit and it falls apart and you don't like it. At least now, a lot of times, you can, you can buy the channels that are more, more likely just presenters and then you can buy the and watch the channels that are like true reviewers and you can watch some of them that'll beat the gun up. And, and test it. Testers and reviewers and presenters and all that other kind of stuff. Get all the information yourself about a gun and then make the decision. I think my point of this whole video is, and you guys let me know, do you think YouTube in general, of all range of products, but GunTube, we're gonna talk about GunTube right here. Do you think GunTube has more influence over guns and gun sales than not? Let me know because this gentleman says, I'm overestimating it. But with millions of people seeing some of these reviews, I disagree. So there it is, guys. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. We will see you next time.